All right, boys and girls, ladies and gents. Um, the funny thing is, is I did this through encoder and I forgot to use my microphone, so I'm having to voice over. Anyway, one of the small joys, um, editing all the fun things. So, well, what I'm doing is I'm gonna go over and grab a tune file real fast. I'm gonna go to sloppy mechanics on the wiki page and I'm gonna go to the tune cabinet so I'm pulling up Matt's page right now. So literally just type in sloppy mechanics, wiki, and hit search. <clears throat> so go down there to the tune cabinet, click on that guy, and we're basically gonna download and import that tune into Termeter X software. So this video is on how do you go grab a tune file and download it. Now you could also build your own, but you know, Matt's got a lot of things that are in here already. And so I went down, I used the 8 for 8 with the uh, VS Racing 210's S475 on Flex Fuel, and basically downloaded that. And once it's downloaded, then you can come back to your download, save it to your desktop, and so I'm saving it to my desktop now. I just open the Terminator X software. And I'm simply going to drag and drop. So, <coughs> um, it's kind of awkward when I'm doing a voiceover like this on a screen record, but, you know, hey, it works. I bet you guys just loved that busy desktop. It's great, wasn't it? That's all my brain gadgetry. So, um... I'm not sure what I'm doing there exactly. Um, I'm coming down to the SD card where desktop where I saved it, <clears throat> and I'm going to grab it. Um, because usually when you save them on your desktop, it's easier to drop them in. You want to save things under the Holly FOW100 or save global config files, things of that nature. So <clears throat> that's where it'll be. Now, there's the tune, it's opened, and now I'm gonna go through the basic settings. I have to change my spark plug, or my spark plugs, yeah. I need those changed too, probably. But my, um, I've got the Snake Eater 1500s. And so he has a different spark plug, or why do I want to call those things spark plugs? It's kind of what they look like. I, want, I have to change my injectors to the Snake Eater 1500s. I'm just going to take a quick glance over a few things. Um, I'm going to change my engine displacement to 360 because I've got a 6.0. And uh, just kind of look. Now, I'm running this in open loop, so <clears throat> I don't have the closed loop enabled, so it's not going to learn. I'm just basically wanting to run this off my parameters, so I'm looking at this, I'm gonna check my spark table, I'm gonna check the fuel table. I'm just gonna see if everything is kind of compatible here for a startup. So this is the VE table, this is your fuel table. See the learn, it's gonna be empty, there's not gonna be anything in there, it's gonna be on open loop. Matt's got the AFRs already set for, <clears throat> for boost on what he wants. It looked pretty good to me for a basic first start. And uh, I'm just kind of looking over everything, and it all looks pretty good for a basic start. Now, this is just going to be a start in the garage. This is not going to even be a drive around the block. There's not going to be any pools. There's not going to be any things. I don't have a map sensor, so that's what I'm like, oh, it's set to a four-bar map right now. Custom four-bar. Matt set that up for, <clears throat> I'm not for sure which custom four-bar, maybe low dollar or one of those. I'm not sure, but I got an EFI source. So I will set that up when I get my EFI map source map in there, but right now I've just got the single NA, the simple NA LS map sensor in there. But uh, so you can go in and look at your inputs and outputs that are pinned and what they're pinned to and uh, see what he's got. Now he's got a flex fuel, he's got the Mac 4 port on a boost flow and uh, you'll see that pop up here in just a second. The fan is on. He had a secondary fuel pump because he's running two fuel pumps. 
Um, so he's running that off of the computer as well. Now, <clears throat> if you're out of inputs or outputs, you could also run it on a toggle, turn it on that way, a manual switch. That's how a lot of race cars do it. You know, um, my dad's bracket car does that. You simply hit the switch, turn the fuel pump on. You got to remember to turn it off. But uh, you know, and then once the car's running, you just leave it on. So anyway, it's kind of like an electric water pump that's you know on a manual switch so I just I'm looking over all this stuff here it's um, the Mac 4 port on this video goes to PWM and so one goes to an output <clears throat> on your harness and link that with the correct number with the wire and then the other one goes to a, a, a voltage source so it's going to go to power so this one's actually in number two on the output <clears throat> my fan is number one which is exactly how i have it wired so no changes need to be done there and but i'm not actually going to run the four port right now i'm just going to run it on spring pressure and uh, hopefully that'll be i don't have a whole lot of wastegate right now so that may be more than i anticipate but um, you know, I've got to check my welds, I've got to make sure this whole setup works, uh, it'll idle with these new injectors, all the things. So I've got a lot of rerouting, I've got a lot of simple stuff to do. Um, you can see how it's tagged, <clears throat> you can go in and change the view on how to read out on the screen. I'm not going to change any of that, um, I'm not, I don't have a trans brake or anything, I don't have any special stuff right now. So I think he's got like 16 right there at idle. Um, so that should work just fine for me and what I'm doing for now just on a start. And uh, <clears throat> see how it's going to idle. I'm not, so I don't think I'm going to change anything in that spark table right there. Uh, once again, looking just kind of going over a few graphs in the different areas. Um, target air fuel ratio looks good. So I'm just kind of cruising through, through things here, just double checking everything and making sure he hadn't put anything that, you know, because I believe it's on dome pressure and I don't have a trans brake. I'm not going to do a scramble button right now, maybe later down the road, throw in an extra five pounds of boost. Um, but that's kind of what I'm doing right here and just kind of double checking everything. Everything looks good for my tune now. You guys double check with your tuner. I'm not going to give you any specific tuning advice. That's basically just how I got the wiki tune, how I got this thing set up, <clears throat> and how I'm basically going to get this thing going. Okay? You could go in and build a tune from scratch, you know, do a GM60 turbo application and build it that way. And it'll basically input some of this boost settings and, and different things. But, uh,. This is pretty close to what my end game will be, and I may set up just a, a complete open loop setup here for you know um, the near future. He has a secondary fuel pump there, so I just disabled that because I don't have one. <clears throat> my pump should be good to about 850 on E85, so I will probably run out of pump before you know I get to two bar map sensor, but or all the way through it into the three bar, but anyway, it'll work for now. And uh, just double checking a few of these things and going over just double checking. You know, it never hurts to double check. Make sure you know what you're looking at, where you're looking at. If you have any questions, make sure you get a hold of your tuner because once again, this is not tuning advice, guys. I am not talking about how to tune your vehicle. If your stuff, you know, you set this up and hey, you know, I got this wiki file like I got from Matt, you're on your own, okay? So I'm just kind of showing you how the software works, how you drop it in there, how you save it, <clears throat> and how you get it put to the SD card. So from here, I saved it as I wanted it saved in the exact location because you gotta be careful. I saved it to the desktop. So just don't go in there and hit save. Save as, specifically put it where you want it. I'm gonna drop this, the saved stuff here right back onto the HD card exactly where I want it done and how I want it labeled. So make sure you do that because you'll save it, you'll do all this, and then you will be able to find it later and you're like, where did I put it? What did I do? Oh my gosh, where did it go? And that's kind of important, okay? So 
I've got that saved and <clears throat> I just took a little minute to go back through everything just real quick double checking everything going over it and uh, anyway but uh, hopefully this will help you guys and you know you could go in and do a, a complete base file tune from here and and all that but you know there's no need to do a lot of that there are so many resources out there and things that you can do okay so hopefully this helps you guys and uh, you know we'll have a, we'll see if she'll fire up here before too long so it's all done it's all built it's ready to go so if you have any questions drop it down in the comment box I'll try to answer them and uh, I'll send a link to Matt there at uh, sloppy mechanics for you as well so um, <clears throat> Yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing there, but I think I just opened up a bass tune and you know It's got all the shifting all the things there So there's a lot of different ways to do it guys get with your tuner on specific tuning advice So you know what you're doing, but there's basically how you save it if you get it from them um, It's the same way if you get it from a tuner, you know, they can email this stuff drop it You know you download it <clears throat> Boom you put it into your own stuff. You never really have to go see them or anything for just a bass tune there's some great guys doing some good stuff out there. If you need some help, holler at me. Um, but anyway, you guys take care. Have a good afternoon.